Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello Leos. So the loving ancestor advice that is coming through for you for 2023 is related to discernment. And there's a really strong message here that discernment will make or break you this year. So you are encouraged to review, redo, and don't rush, okay, with anything important that you're working on and in making really important decisions. I'm almost surprised that the judgment card didn't come up here, um, but we definitely have the justice card here, which is absolutely also connected to making critical decisions, right? Weighing the pros and cons of things and really, really using your discernment, right? That's really what justice is all about and making decisions from a space of balance, from centered self-awareness, okay? And there is so much that has come through related to this and all of the different variations of this particular message related to this question of who are the loving ancestors and spiritual guides coming through in this reading to support you for 2023 and how might you know them? We got the magician and the sun card in reverse. And so these are reflective of um, matriarchs in your family, right? Very strong sort of matriarchal ancestors, right? Grandmothers, great grandmothers, um, and people who are very, who, who were very, very spiritual and had a lot of spiritual power and influence in the family tree. And so with that, these may be people that you knew or even didn't know. For some of you, it could even be mothers, right, who have passed, right? But it's definitely about the matriarchal line. It's about people who had very great influence in the um, sort of like spiritual um, sort of foundations and cultures of your bloodline and of your sort of like um, cultural um, ancestry, right? And so with this, um, when these cards come out in general, even unrelated to this question of, you know, who are the sort of spiritual guides coming through in the reading and what sort of advice they have for you, when these cards are in reverse in general, it's also a sign about, um, and when they come out in reverse, right, it's about the sign of there being a need for you to connect more deeply with your sort of spirituality and um, understanding deep sort of divine feminine wisdoms related to cultural traditions in which um, you come from and um, that that is important to you building more self-confidence and to you not being susceptible to being easily manipulated, right? You having a strong discernment through being deeply connected to this true sense of who you are, cultural wisdoms and traditions, and just your spirituality and intuition in general, right? And that is really important because in terms of what sort of karmic cycles or even problems that they are helping you to resolve for the year, we also have the sort of seven of swords, um, which comes out in this deck as politics, right? And we have that in reverse. And we also have the experiencing card, which when you look at this card, it is absolutely about someone being sensitive and in touch with their surroundings, being able to discern and feel the energies around them um, in their daily life and you know, just in general and overall, when I finally got all of the cards out on the table, um, 
I got this feeling of wanting to rush through something just to get it done. I was, I was getting this feeling of like wanting to rush through the reading. And then my cat kept like, um, interrupting and being a distracting, a distraction and coming and sitting on the cards and all of these things. And it's like it, that was about this feeling related to like something that you are going through. Like there's this feeling of wanting to rush through something to just get it done, or maybe even feeling some sort of pressure from people who you work with, since we have the interdependence card, right? To rush through something um, to get it done, right? Some sort of fast production, right? And the message that I'm getting, the sort of psychic advice, the ancestral advice that is coming through here is like, don't take any shortcuts in production. Don't rush through an experience and don't let anyone rush you who you may be working with on something. Because there's this message of you will get out what you put in right? The output will reflect the input and it will be easily discernible um, by others, right? Who come in contact with whatever it is that you produce. If it's something creative, if it's something, some sort of product, whatever it is, like if it is not born from sort of authentic passion, thoughtfulness and mindfulness and a sort of care, um, that is something that people will be able to discern when they experience whatever it is that you put out. So that's one message that I was getting, right? And there's also this message that, you know, perfection takes time, but also recognize how perfectionism can sometimes be a root cause of procrastinations and delays, right? And, you know, so perfectionism can cause procrastination and delays. It's like, it's a sign of some emotional issue or insecurity that needs to be reviewed and worked through. And with this experiencing card, right? It's like being present, self-aware and secure in who you are and also being present and patient in your daily life to be truly inspired and to receive authentic creative ideas and flow is really what this card is kind of like inviting you to do. That's really what it is inviting you to do. And the difference between, you know, this could, this could be about you cultivating a new daily routine where you are eliminating distractions, right? And doing more internal work around being unbothered by external opinion and validation and how, you know, that sort of spirituality that you begin to build into your sort of daily life increases your intuition and your ability to be extremely discerning about um, your surroundings, your sort of projects, your dealings, people you deal with, etc. right? And the difference between needing external validation and having a sort of healthy openness to feedback really hinges on how secure you really are. And when you're secure, when you're insecure, it's what I want to say. When you're insecure, you need external validation for a sense of confidence and are simultaneously susceptible to being crushed by failure and rejection or being too open to suggestion and manipulation, right? And you'll end up just saying yes to something for validation or even what people call selling your soul, right? And like putting on a false mask that people will then also be able to see through, right? And people being able to see through your false mask with something you produce or being able to tell if something is uninspired and formulaic or just not truly authentic and born of passion, right? And when you're insecure and need external validation, you'll end up with a bunch of yes men around you, right? Who can also manipulate you for their benefit or 
even for your sabotage, right? By playing on your insecurity and getting you to do things by telling you simply what you want to hear, okay? And when you are secure in yourself, you're someone who has a humility and an appreciation for growth opportunities that show up from feedback and even failure, okay? And you're able to understand, you know, that the world doesn't revolve around you and that your daily life and internal world can also be very rich and doesn't have to revolve around the outside world either, right? And so with feedback and failure, then when you're intuitive, when you're humble and you're confident, you won't be crushed by any feedback and failure, right? You can discern a yes man or a critic versus a critique, right? And then be able to also discern who's a secret hater or manipulator. And you can discern what is useful information, what isn't, what you disregard and what you keep, right? To improve yourself, to improve whatever it is that you do for work, or for passion, right? And this can only happen from a sort of ego death, right? And from truly, truly taking the time to develop your spirituality and become centered and connected to an authentic individuality and self-expression. And, you know, that is really what lends to a sort of healthy interdependence with the world and an understanding of how all things work together, right? The good and the bad, how it all happens for you and is a gift. And again, that discernment helps you then in navigating interdependent relationships, right? Making judgment calls, weighing pros and cons of situations, contracts, and handling people, right? Right? Discerning who should be in your circle and who isn't. And so this is actually really similar to the Jupiter and Aries um, astrology and oracle message that I did for you all, where there was a message that came through about, you know, being a humble student in life, not being too fixed and, and, you know, understanding the value of failure, okay, the value of failure, how it really, truly gifts you with deep wisdoms that you just really would not get otherwise, okay? And so failure is is one of those things where, like, it can feel like it knocks you and knocks you back, sets you back so much, but truly failure when it is looked at from this higher spiritual and intuitive perspective it really actually a lot of times gives you insight to put you like a hundred steps ahead, right? And um, I'm really just getting that that is like the, the main, main, main advice for you for this year. And that is reflected here in the cards with the say yes card. I was getting, you know, I'm getting that in relationship to this situation about yes men in your circle next to this interdependence card. Um, you know, and, and again, all of the discernment related to course correcting and this card about releasing the past, right? Failures are not indicative of your worth, right? And, um, Again, all of that comes from having this higher sort of sense of self-awareness and um, a sort of humility, right? Um, Not having a big ego and, you know, understanding that, you know, when you understand that your failures are not representative of your worth, you can, again, you can just release the past really easily and just keep moving forward, right? And um, failure doesn't have to be about a breakdown, but about a breakthrough, okay? So I'm going to read these cards to you. Interdependence is a wonderful attribute, but if taken to an extreme, it can border on isolation, 
Sometimes if we have been hurt or let down or trapped in a codependent relationship, we lose faith in others and learn only to rely on ourselves. This card calls you to question this inner belief and to develop healthy interdependent relationships with an equality of both giving and receiving. Okay. Course correct card reads, if an obstacle or diversion has interrupted your plans, this card is here to assure you that the delay is providential, bringing you an opportunity to pause and reassess in order to fine tune your direction. And then we also have the release the path, the past. Hmm. Release the path. Well, maybe that means something for some of you. Release the past, though, says releasing the past does not mean that we forget, nor does it mean that if something bad happens, that this was okay. It means that we can make a personal choice to no longer allow our history to dictate and shape our life, both now in our present time and in our future. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's like for some of you, maybe you have paranoia about the people around you, about who you can trust, and um, some insecurity about sharing something that you're working on, right? Um, or, you know, like you're taking personally feedback um, that you're getting, right? And just seeing everything as about this sort of, you know, you're taking things really personal as a critique. Um, and again, just everything that I was saying about just discernment and, and, you know, just all of that, just being really critical to navigating any of these sorts of scenarios that you may find yourself in for 2023. Okay. And so we have the fire and the triple spiral card, these two little black cards that came out related to, um, what is also sort of in store for you and advised by your loving and guiding ancestors? And we have the fire card. It says, the element of fire heralds new life, renewed passion, and positive transformation. And then the triple spiral, which also I have to say is related to um, divine femininity and divine feminine wisdom and and just wisdom from matriarchs, which again uh, showed up in this terms of like this, uh, the cards about like who are your sort of supporting guides for this year. The triple spiral says listening to divine wisdom and joyfully learning life's lessons. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I want to read the rainbow card here because the rainbow card is in reverse. So let's see here. Okay, the rainbow symbolizes the seven steps of a true spiritual path, which manifest as the colors of the seven chakras. So it seems to be in general, right, that there is this deep, deep instruction from your guides that you really have to deepen your sort of spiritual life, deepen your spiritual practice, deepen your understanding of spirituality and esoteric concepts. And um, yeah, because we see the sort of colors of the rainbow represented throughout these cards. It's in the experiencing card where this person is um, cloaked um, in this sort of robe but where it's all illuminated and sort of lit up with spiritual energy and the colors of the rainbow and the chakra wheel are represented on the sort of inverse colors of this sort of cloak that they're wearing. And then the Say Yes card, there's, you know, the colors of the rainbow there. And this is all connecting to this idea and then the, the ten of wands here in reverse in the bottom row of tarot cards it's like that's also the rainbow and um it's all about you know deepening your spirituality and discernment being 
something that can help you completely drop any burden or paranoia you have about um, trust, trust and paranoia with regards to the people around you, how to navigate conflicts, contracts, and conversations, and, you know, make judgment calls that are in your best interest, okay? Okay, so the rainbow also represents the bridge between the physical and the spiritual worlds. At the end of our lives, we can journey across the rainbow bridge to the highest heavenly realms. When the rainbow appears, it is an affirmation that all is well and that you are in right relationship with spirit. However, we have this card in reverse here. Okay, so I'm going to read to you what it says. It says, don't get caught in pursuit of the illusion or the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Find the treasure now in the moment by coming into right relationship with those around you. All your gifts are at hand. So obvious you may have missed them. Be true with your intentions and do not be led astray by daydreams. All right, y'all. So there, this is a, this is a clear clear omen here that y'all got to get in touch and do some key discernment about how to move forward here with some big things you're working on with people you're working on and you know finding your truth in your center and really just doing projects releasing projects and products and whatever it is that you do for a living whatever it is that you bring to the world only doing things from a sense of authenticity and passion okay all of that is here right and there's also this message about you know the big comeback (laughs) that i'm getting right there's there's the sort of big comeback that i'm kind of getting and feeling for you all here in this year of 2023 with whatever it is that you're doing don't skip over the big review and the redo if it is needed, okay, with anything that you're working on, all right, um, don't rush, take time, get centered, connect, and move from that strong centered space, okay, that is the overall advice, and to wrap up this reading, to wrap everything up, um, angel number messages came through, and these come through at the top of the reading. This is also another way that I receive psychic insight. And um, this is just going to wrap up the reading. Let's see what additional messages they have for you. All right. So number five brings its energies of major life changes, making positive choices and decisions, versatility and variety courage, motivation, learning life lessons, and auspicious opportunities. And two is about faith and trust, insight and intuition, partnerships and relationships, support, understanding and encouragement. And it's a master builder number 22, right? And so this number 522 in general is a message that, you know, there are changes in your life that will bring about a more spiritual perspective and approach and you're asked to make changes in your life to bring about a more spiritual perspective and approach right and you're asked to stay balanced and focused during changes and transitions you're encouraged to see the bigger picture and make necessary changes in order to complete that picture and you're encouraged to bring things through to fruition on both the spiritual and material planes Remain optimistic about current life changes as they are in direct alignment with your divine life purpose and soul mission. And know that all is going to divine plan. All right. Strong faith and trust manifest positive energies and auspicious circumstances into your life. Trust that the angels have heard your prayers and positive affirmations and are responding and answering by presenting changes and opportunities to advance you along your path, all right? And again, that can absolutely be uh, detours. That could be feedback. That could be failure, right? Again, something that temporarily sets you back, but that truly can put you 100 steps ahead, 
All right, 522 also suggests that the life changes you are facing will bring about new opportunities that will turn out to be the answers to your prayers. Stay calm, balanced, and focused, and trust intuitive messages and promptings. Use these energies to change things to the way you want them to be. Stop wasting time and energy resisting change. Embrace change and trust that everything will work out just Fine. Absolutely. Wow. Ashe. We thank your loving and guiding and protecting ancestors for coming through in this reading. And Leos, I pray that 2023 is an incredible year for you, right? Make it an incredible year. Trust yourself. Be confident. Okay, and definitely come back here for more messages. Come back for your monthly horoscopes. Visit for your daily motivation meditations and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and take care.